Today we are going to focus on a developer confusion that usually happens whether they are actually using OAuth or whether they're using OpenID Connect. So this is mostly for somebody who already knows some parts of OAuth, but there is always a confusion. So let's take a look. And I'm going to talk about it with the help of an example, along with some diagrams. So let's say that you are a developer and you want to write a learning management system, basically put out some courses out there so that people can download and watch and then, you know, make some money out of it. The first thing that you have to do here is to say, who are your users and how are you actually going to store these users and where are you going to store these users? So you decide you have an identity and access management system. Maybe you can just use LDAP, Active Directory, for example, or any other proprietary way of doing it. We don't care. All of your learning assets are going to be stored in this learning data store and all of your identities of the users are going to be stored in this identity and access management. You might use LDAP, you might use SAML, you might even use OpenID Connect. We don't care. So on the left side, you see the browser and the user who's actually using the system. This is a very simple system. At this point, there is no OAuth, no OpenID Connect. There is a red arrow out there. That's authentication. That's where the authentication of the user is happening. It's very clear. Now let's say you have a brainwave and you say, okay, all of these users who are learning in my system, who are taking courses, they want to publish it in their LinkedIn or in their Facebook accounts so that all of their peers would know about this. Definitely a good idea. But here's the problem. How would the learning management system access the LinkedIn API and the Facebook API? It would look something like this. Somehow the learning management system has to talk to the LinkedIn and the Facebook API. Both LinkedIn and Facebook being big social applications, they also have their own OAuth servers. LinkedIn has this LinkedIn auth server. Facebook has Facebook auth server. Now using those auth server and using OAuth as the protocol, the learning management system would get an access token from LinkedIn auth server to call the LinkedIn API, and it will call the Facebook auth server to get the Facebook access token to call the Facebook API. The authentication of the user to the learning management system is still happening with the identity and access management. That has not changed. The only thing you needed was the learning management system to access the LinkedIn APIs. Now, as part of getting the access tokens, the authorization server will prompt you for actual authorization for your approval and also will take your credentials. That is not the authentication that the user is doing with the learning management system. It's the authentication which the user is doing with the LinkedIn so that it knows who the person is. After all, the learning management system has to do something on behalf of the user. So here, we are simply using OAuth 2.0. We are not using OpenID Connect. All the learning management system is interested in is to call the LinkedIn API or the Facebook API using an access token. It is not interested in knowing anything about the user. The learning management system already knows things about the user. It has that information in the identity and access management. How did the learning management know about this user? Because for the user to actually use the learning management system, they had to first register, provide their username, the password, the phone numbers or address or whatever they want to capture. So this is a use case basically for OAuth 2.0. Now let's change the requirements a bit. You have a new brainwave and you say, why would I want my users to actually register with the learning management system? These users already have, let's say, Google accounts or Apple accounts. Can the users simply use those accounts to log into my learning management system and not have the users specifically register to my learning management system. Now that sounds like a good idea because many users would not want to give out their personal information. Okay, so this one, basically what we see on the screen is we are talking about OAuth token being used to access both LinkedIn and Facebook. 
So coming back to the OpenID Connect, here's the situation. I have just moved the identity and access management, which was at the top, to the left side because I want to make room for more identity management systems. So here now the situation is you want the learning management system to access Google and Apple OpenID Connect servers so that they can log into the learning management system. It will look something like this. So you have Google and Apple both having their own authorization servers. They also have their own identity data store. So now anybody who has a login account in Google and Apple should be able to log into the learning management system. Now this is an example of OpenID Connect. We would be using OpenID Connect to connect those two. In both cases, in OAuth and OpenID Connect, the users would be asked for credentials. The difference in OpenID Connect is when the user enters the user ID and password, it gets authenticated by Google or Apple, but that's specifically to get authenticated to the learning management system. The learning management system is piggybacking off of the credentials of Google and Apple to allow the users or students to log in to the learning management system. The learning management system here is not interested in calling any of the APIs of Google or Apple. It's not even interested in the access token itself. It's only interested in knowing who this user is. And that's why when you actually do OpenID Connect, you also get what is called as the ID token. ID token is a jot which contains the information about the users. So basically the request that is going to go from learning management system to Google Auth Server or Apple Auth Server contains the scopes for OpenID. So you specifically specify a scope called OpenID. And you might also specify profile and email to get the information about the user. So basically OpenID Connect means that you are sending an authorized request to authorization servers with an OpenID profile and email scopes. OpenID is actually enough. If you want more information, then you will have profile and email. So now what we are not talking about here is in a lot of cases, identity and access management can also act like a broker in the middle, which can consolidate all of these three different types of users into one data store. So if you think about the learning management system, they have three kinds of users, users who are registered specifically in its own identity and access management, the Google users, and then the Apple users. The very first time where they are asked to log in, they would be given these three choices, a user ID and a password text boxes with a login button, which makes it log with the identity and access management, or buttons to specifically log in via Google or Apple. And clicking on those buttons would actually initiate an OpenID authorized request to the respective authorization servers. So this in short is the big picture of the difference between OAuth and OpenID Connect. The OAuth users are not interested in the information about the users. They are simply interested in the access token so that they can call the APIs. The OpenID Connect, on the other hand, is specifically interested in the user information, may not be interested in the access token. Now, that being said, in many cases, specifically in enterprise applications, you could use both. So the scopes that you send to the authorization server would include OpenID scopes, like OpenID profile email, but also application-specific scopes. Because guess what? In enterprise applications, you have a user interface part. That user interface part might lie on Angular on the browser side, or it might lie on the server side, maybe Struts or maybe Spring UI. This UI can send the authorized request to the authorization server using OpenID Connect and the application scopes, get authenticated specifically, and then use the access token to call each one of their microservices because this is mostly used when you have microservices environment so that the access token can be used in any of those microservices. So hopefully this short video has clarified some of the big picture of the differences between OAuth and OpenID Connect. 
Of course, we have not gone into the details of the authorized request, you know, what is sent, what is coming back, but this should tell you when you should be using OAuth and when you should be using OpenID Connect.